What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some beginner tips and tricks for the OnePlus Nord N300 5G to help you get more comfortable using it. Now, in case you end up wanting to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the video description where I will be linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to change your wallpaper. This is probably something you're going to do at least once or twice throughout owning this phone. And luckily, it is a really easy thing to do. So the first thing you're going to do is go to your settings. Then from here, go to personalizations. In this menu, you're going to see wallpapers in the top left corner. Then from here, we got a few different options. As you can see, there are 15 different static wallpapers already on the phone, basically stock wallpapers. Then in the top left corner, we got album, which is basically just your own photos. And you can also choose inventive wallpapers if you really want to customize things. Now that was easy enough, but I'm going to show you an even faster way to change your wallpaper and customize some other parts of your home screen as well. So for this, all you have to do is press and hold your finger on any blank spot on your home screen. So just like this. And as you can see, this screen is going to show up. From here, you can change your wallpaper, customize your icons, add and remove widgets, change the layout, change your transitions, and access some additional home screen settings. So definitely a lot you can do here. That's one thing I really like about OnePlus's phones. In so many different ways, they are really customizable. Now we're going to take a quick look at the sound menu. First things first, to get to this menu, go to your settings. Then from here, go to sound and vibration. So the sound menu here is pretty simple. We got do not disturb up top. Then below that, we got a few different volumes. So media volume, if you're watching a video, listening to music, stuff like that. Ringtone, pretty self-explanatory. Notifications, so this is different from your ringtone. And it does include stuff like text messages. And then finally, the alarm volume. Then below this, we can actually customize these sounds. So for the ringtone, for example, we got our default, as well as a bunch of different options for preset ringtones. And then you can also add your own. Below this, we got a few other options. So vibrate on ring, vibrate on silent. Those are both going to be on by default. Then we got system haptics. So stuff like dial pad tone, lock screen sound, screenshot sound, deletion sound. All of those are going to be on by default. And then if you want, you can also turn on touch sounds. Now I'm going to show you how to manage which apps can send you notifications. Now this is a really important thing to do right when you get your phone, because the more apps you get, the more random notifications you're going to get. And not only can this be annoying, but getting a bunch of notifications you don't need can also make it easier to miss something important. Luckily though, compared to a lot of other manufacturers out there, OnePlus does actually make managing notifications pretty easy. So what you're going to do is go to your settings. From here, go to notifications and status bar. And you're going to see under app notifications, it's going to have a bunch of different things here. By default, it's only going to show you the recent ones. But if you want, you can hit this drop down and you can have it show you everything. Then from here to turn off notifications from any given app, simply toggle it off and it's no longer going to send you anything. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change your screen lock. Now by default, it's going to be a pin. And I personally have the fingerprint scanner on too. If you ever want to change any of this, what you're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to password and security. And from here, we got a few different options. To change your main screen lock, go to lock screen password, enter your current pin. And from here, you can choose between numeric, which is basically just a normal pin, alphanumeric, so a more complicated password, and pattern, which is pretty much the easiest one. And then if you go back to the main password and security menu, you can also set up the fingerprint scanner and face unlock. Now I'm going to show you how to change the system navigation. Now by default with this phone, you're going to be using something called gesture navigation, which in case you've never used it before, let me give you a quick rundown on how it works. So with gesture navigation, to go to your home screen, swipe up. To go to your recent apps, drag your finger partially up. And to go back, swipe from the side. So definitely pretty simple, but I know a lot of people out there really don't like gesture navigation. So if you want to go back to the buttons, let me show you how to do that. So as always, go to settings. Then from here, go all the way down to system settings. At the very top of this menu, you're going to see system navigation. Go there. As you can see, again, by default, it is going to be on gestures. But if you want the buttons instead, hit buttons. And as you can see, it changes right away. Now I'm going to show you how to use dark mode. Dark mode is a pretty cool feature, not a whole lot to it. If you ever want to use it, go to settings. From here, go to display and brightness. And dark mode is right up here at the top. So again, pretty cool, definitely more of a basic feature. And keep in mind, you can also schedule it to turn on automatically by going to auto switch, toggle it on, and from here, you can have it turn on from sunset to sunrise, or use a custom time. Now I'm going to show you how to turn off the phone. Now this might kind of sound weird at first, but with this phone, if you press and hold the power key, instead of actually going to the power menu, it's going to pull up the virtual assistant. So keep in mind, if you ever want to get to the power menu, instead of pressing and holding the power key, or I guess it's not really the power key anymore, it's more of a side key, but press that button and the volume up key at the same time. And as you can see, it takes you right to the power menu. 
Now I'm going to show you how to take a screenshot with the OnePlus Nord N300 5G. Now it's funny, on one hand this is a really basic function, but on the other hand there are like three different ways to do it on this phone. So the first way, the normal way, which a lot of people probably already know, is by pressing the power key and the volume down key at the same time. And keep in mind you don't actually have to hold these buttons, just press them once. So like this. And there we go. Now the next way to take a screenshot, and keep in mind these features are all active by default, so you don't even need to go to your settings to enable anything. But keep in mind, if you put three fingers on your screen and swipe down, that's also going to take a screenshot. So definitely a cool shortcut there. And then finally, if you're ever in a situation where you just want to take a screenshot of one specific part of the screen, what you can do is take a partial screenshot by pressing and holding three fingers on the screen wherever you want. And you can resize it whatever you want to do. And once you're done, it's going to be saved to your photos just like a normal screenshot. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to change your screen timeout time. This is definitely a big one if you're doing a lot of reading, web browsing, even some games for that matter. Because with that kind of activity, if your screen timeout time is too short, unless you're constantly tapping on your screen, your phone might fall asleep in the middle of it. And that's probably not something you want to have to deal with. So to change your screen timeout time, what you're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to display and brightness. And in this menu, at the very bottom, you're going to see something called auto screen off. Then from here, as you can see, you can set it from 15 seconds all the way up to never. So if you're doing a lot of reading, watching videos, playing games, stuff like that, you might want to set it to something like 30 minutes. Or maybe if you're doing a lot of content consumption, you could always set it to never. But even if you're doing a lot of that stuff, I personally don't recommend this because when you have it set to never, this kind of goes without saying, but it basically means your screen is never going to turn off unless you specifically turn it off. And especially if you have the 90 hertz on and your brightness decently high, when the screen is on indefinitely, this can drain the battery pretty fast. And even if it doesn't, when you have auto sleep set to never, say you forget to turn it off and then you put your phone in your pocket. That's asking for all kinds of trouble. So again, the bottom line here is, although I definitely do appreciate a pretty long screen timeout time, like as you can see, I have mine set to 30 minutes, I still don't really recommend setting it to stay on indefinitely. Because even though there are some potential benefits, especially if you're consuming a lot of content, the battery drawbacks and then the risk of pocket dialing or pocket deleting something are just too high. But then again, at the end of the day, screen timeout time is really up to personal preference. So if leaving it on indefinitely works for you, then by all means go for it. And on the flip side, maybe you really just don't do a whole lot with your phone and you'd rather save as much battery as you can. In that case, you might want to set your screen timeout time to really short like 15 seconds or something. In general, when it comes to screen timeout time, there's really no right or wrong answer. It's just going to come down to personal preference and how you're actually using your phone. So definitely play around with it and see which setting works best for you. But this concludes my beginner's guide to the OnePlus Nord N300 5G. In general, this really is one of those phones that has a lot of different features. And the ones I showed you in this video are definitely some of the more basic ones. So if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I will be making several other tips and tricks videos for this phone in the near future. And in addition to this, if you want to learn more about the phone in general, like specs, features, all that kind of stuff, definitely check out the various links in the video description where I will be including several other videos about this phone, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite overall smart smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipa's Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.